These last, all the mobs Miller I've got, I, I think they're Canadian maple. Um, some people say hornbeam's the best. I know it's like for shoemaking, but all the clog last seem to be Canadian maple. Uh, no idea why Canadian maple, why it wasn't sycamore, but um, that's what they preferred. And they must have had really good, good reason for it, or they wouldn't. So anyway, you, you, the standard way of doing this is this is a straight last. You see, it's not a left or a right. It's a straight. And it's a model number 32560. And it's between a 6 and an 8. So basically, the English way is you get a nail and you nail it over there. Okay, like, get this right, like so. The leather is actually Indian water buffalo. This isn't, this is cowhide, but traditionally it was Indian water buffalo, black, suede side out, rolled in a heavy black wax. And you, you heat it up with a thing called a half round bottom glazer, which is basically a file, a half round file that's smooth with a handle on each end. And that's heated up over a gas or over a fire. And then it's rolled onto the leather. And as uh, it, heats the leather up the hard wax in the leather melts becomes liquid then you can pull it down to shape so you nail over here you nail over here you nail over here and then the last thing you do is you hammer here to push this down because i show you the last it's tapered and as you do that you get a nice tight line but thomas james didn't do that thomas james's last didn't have a mark on the underside so what did he do he got a piece of thread and he stitched it in and out of here and then he pulled it like a purse and tightened it up all underneath. He then did the same here and here. He got a piece of thread and as he heated the leather, he pulled it down with thread. So his lasts he used for 40, 50, 60 years never had a mark underneath them except just at the heel where you tap. You just tap there to tighten up that line. The English ones use nails and they're all wrecked. But Thomas James didn't do that. He said he was a very precise man. So as soon as you've got this stitched and you take it off, what you end up with is you end up with a shape, which this hasn't got at the moment. And because you've, you've taken it off and it's all tucked in, you've got a little pronounced toe there that you've made by drawing this in all the way around it. So you take it off the last, You've heated it up, it's set, it's gone cold and set. You then present it to the sole, but you've got a straight. So how do you get a straight onto a curve? You just move this slightly forward. That makes this side fuller and this side shallower. Just a tweak, that's all you have to do. And then you pin them up and the customer comes in and tries them on because they're all made to measure. So you can do all your final stuff with your customer, which of course you can't do by post, but that's, you know, when it's a village trade, people come in and you try and you, you move it around and you ease it. So that's, that's how that's done. And this is a Welsh slipper. It's a very, it's, think of a backless Swedish clog with a very small back, it's basically what it is. You put a clasp over here, um, just a click on clasp, I'll show you some later. Or you can have one side of this longer and have a button or some of them were just stitched over. So you'd have this stitched over that and stitched down, but it's not adjustable then. And these were a yard boot. You could go out of the house, come back in, and uh, just kick them off at the door and put slippers on. So that was very economical style. Most economical style out there uses least amount of materials. And when you cut them, they, there's very little waste from the way the pattern's shaped on, on the hide. It's, it's a good style. I'll show you, um, an English clasp. That's pretty much the same thing. There's a clasp. Okay, this is a child's clasp. There were two different um, clasp manufacturers. There was John Watts and there was Horsefields. And they were the two, seem to be the two manufacturers up north that made clasps. Uh, so this, this is more of a boot. You see, it's, it's much higher and it fits more around the ankle. The, the, the slipper fitted more as a shoe from there to there. This fits more around the ankle. Now this is a stitch. If I put my finger inside here, there's, there's no thread. 
and there's no thread on that side either. Now it could be neater but it is tough and basically what you do is you get um, five or six strands of cotton and you taper them so you start one there you start next one there next one there next one there and then you twist them and you you rub them in a heavy wax and they used to have different waxes uh, for different temperatures so in the winter they use a, a softer wax than they'd use in the summer um, when i first started you could get different different types of wax but what you do is you go through at the, the bottom and you you have a curved needle right like a surgeon's needle and you twist it through and up but you don't go right through the leather you go through the edge so it's quite gory so say this is the leather I go through here I come out here I go up through here and I come out here so there's no stitch going through and I run the thread through uh, and after I've done the thread it's spliced onto Russian boar bristles it has to be Russian boar's bristles in the old days because that was very cold there, so the bristles were more bristly. Okay, and also Russian boars are a lot bigger than European ones. Uh, so you, it's very much a, as you splice a joint onto a rod, how you do it onto the Russian boar's bristle. But you, you twist it and lock it onto the, 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 the boar's bristle. Then you have a piece of thread with bristle each end. And what you do is you, you start off and you run one through and then you make another hole just further up uh, and you go through again but this time you put the br bristles opposite each other so they go th run through the hole so you push them in then catch them pull them make another hole go up then you get to the top you come back down one or two and nip off now because this wax is so heavy it's got so much friction it never comes loose so you just come down one or two threads and lock off. Now, by the force of pushing that thread together, you've actually raised this because it's under tension. So that then hides the join. So it's a great stitch. Unfortunately, when it breaks, if it breaks, you can't fix it uh, because you've sent them off to the other side of the, of the country. So it's not quite so good for um, stuff by post. So I don't use this. I use a synthetic thread and do a much cruder stitch but because the thread is less uh, likely to abrade it lasts really well but this is the old-fashioned stitch and this is probably about the only I've only done one or two pairs with this and, and that's how it meant that's a traditional clog it's got brass nails soles are actually too thick really um, there's your irons okay now this particular type of iron has little tags and you bend those over so that you can't catch it on the ground and, and pull them off so you you have lots of different types of iron and you can match up your heels with with your iron so that you can you can make them these don't fit actually they should be pretty much the same curve as that the front's a little bit better that's a common round your nails are pretty much the same as a horseshoe nail it's pretty much exactly the same thing it's a wedge it's a slightly if you look at it from above it looks like a matchbox and then it tapers down on four sides and you you bend them slightly curved and you flatten the edges and when you put them in they 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 turn and lock that's the idea now normally you're told never to put a sharp nail into wood because a sharp nail will will make um, a crack in wood you're supposed to put a blunt nail into wood and it bruises its way through you don't do that with these you get the nail and you hit it on an anvil each one the end and you get the end like a knife point and it cuts its way in and don't ask me why because it cuts its way in it doesn't split I showed you a bit about the upper once you've got the uppers on uh, you put a, a thing called a, a welt strip that's the welt strip the welt in shoes is a join between the upper and the sole so you have the welt stitch um, or false welt is what most shoes these days have. They have a join, which looks like it's stitched, but it's actually glued on just to, to, to cover the join. But this that's the welt strip. And on these, I've just chamfered this. I always chamfer this. It's uh, something I do. All the clog makers don't. So just to make it a bit neater, 
and to make them look a bit lighter, you do this and that, okay? And what you're taking a bit of weight out, which is pathetic, a small amount, but there is one good reason to do it, is that if this catches, it's less likely to split the wood. So, because you just put a, a chamfer on it there, it seems to be more resistant to, to splitting a, a chunk off. So that's basically one sole, it should be a pair. Um, I, once I've made the upper, I tend to just buff off the edge. But you can, what you can do is, you work out how thick your leather is, and then you put a piece of the leather on here with a pencil, and you mark it round, and then you put a chamfer. This is how they did it in Spain. You put a chamfer, 45 degree chamfer, round it. You cut it back to about the right thickness, but you put a little chamfer on it, and then it covers, it doesn't look bad when you've got it slightly sticking out because it's on an angle. And the other thing is, you've made the wood slightly proud of the leather and that protects the leather joint. I tend to make them flush, uh, which is fine, but they, they tended to make them slightly proud. What you don't want is them to be, the leather to be prouder than the wood, further out than the wood, which modern machine soles nearly always are because they, they're uniform thickness all the way around, and of course in here you have a heel counter quite often, a piece of leather to stiffen up the heel and reinforce it. That makes the whole thing fuller here. So if you use, you, you tend to find that they, they overlap at the back. It's very bad for a dancing clog because when you click the two together, you catch the nails.